Hello, this is Kenneth Wong, contributing editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. Well, the day for the general release of SolidWorks 2011 is getting closer. Currently, it's in pre-release 1. In this review, I'll show you one of the latest changes to come in this release. The retirement of PhotoWorks and the adoption of PhotoView 360 as the default rendering application for the software. For the most part, you shouldn't have any trouble figuring out how PhotoView works because its drag and drop interface is pretty intuitive and consistent with how rendering programs work. What we're looking at here is a wrench, an assembly with roughly about five sub assemblies. So I'm going to activate PhotoView by going to Add in Menu, then putting a check mark on the option for PhotoView. You can also check this box so that PhotoView loads every time you start SolidWorks. But bear in mind that if you, it'll take slightly longer to load the program. So when you activate PhotoView, what you get is this tab. This is the one that gives you the ability to edit color, material, and backgrounds. And if you have got your task panel open, you'll also be able to dive into it through this icon right here. And if you haven't done so, you should switch to Perspective View. The normal CAD modeling window displays 3D models in a way that is easy for you to edit in a parallel view, but not really realistic in how it appears. Perspective view, make your lines and blocks converge to a hypothetical diminishing point, just how things really look to the human eye in real life. When you drop a material onto a part, you'll have the option to apply it to the feature, to a surface, or to the entire subassembly. One reason you might want to keep the preview window open, when you rotate your model, your preview window updates almost instantly. I said almost instantly because the rate at which it updates will depend on the speed of your CPU and your GPU. I'm now going to add materials to the rest of the model and when I'm done, I'll have a model with all the finishes applied to their surfaces. Now I can go ahead and edit the scene, or the backdrop that adds mood to my model. You can browse to your own HDR images if you have a few, by that I mean high dynamic range images. Or you can pick from the preloaded ones that come with photo view. As you do it, you'll see that the lighting from the environment affects your model. You can also rotate the environment through the Advanced tab because rotating the environment is made possible by the fact that the environment is a 360 degree image. There is, however, no easy way, at least not yet in this release, to edit the size or the scale of that environment to make your model look much more natural. This is the kind of thing that you would be able to do in a specialized rendering package like Luxion Keyshot. Resizing your environment may not be that important if your model happens to be sitting on a plain background. But if it sits too close to another object, like this cabinet for instance, you want to be able to resize the background to match your model's proportion. If you'd like to adjust the darkness or the brightness of your scene, you can do that in the Illumination tab. Now, if you'd like to apply decals, you can use the decal function to put an image onto a surface either by dragging and dropping the decal that comes with the program onto the surface or by going to your own JPEG image of your choice. Now decal is best applied at part level, not at the assembly level, because it looks much more natural when it's done on a part rather than the assembly. So I'm going to open this part in its own window and then after I drop the decal on this part, if I go back to the assembly level and render it, there it is, I can see the barcode decal showing up in the assembly mode. For better control over the angle of the view or the way the shot would look, you can add your own custom camera angle. This is also the same window where you'll specify the aspect ratio of your final photo and your camera angle. If you use a custom camera angle, it's important that you activate that in your view window so that you see it exactly the way the camera is meant to see that object. 
Finally, when you're happy with how it looks, you hit the final render and you save your image. Photo View is easy to use and simple, but the ability to scale the environment will go a long way to make your rendering much more natural and realistic. So this is something that I hope to see in future releases. Till next time, this is Kenneth Wong for Desktop Engineering Magazine, wishing you happy rendering.